So next up, uh, next 10 minute talk is on the Wallace Letters Project, big year for Wallace, and George Beccoloni is speaking on that. George. <clears throat> well, I, I'm not going to be talking about um, sort of uh, informatics, but rather somebody who documented a lot of um, biodiversity. So, um, Wallace Letters Online is the Wallace Correspondence Project's online archive of the correspondence and assorted manuscripts of the great 19th century British naturalist Alfred Russell Wallace. Wallace was born in 1823 in Usk, in what is now Wales, and he died in 1913, age 90. Wallace has very many claims to fame, not least that he is the father of um, evolutionary biogeography and the co-discoverer with Charles Darwin of the theory of evolution by natural selection. This year sees the 100th anniversary of his death, um, which hopefully most of you know about, especially given the numerous um, Wallace-related events uh, that the museum has been organizing this year. In 2002, I helped the museum um, purchase an archive of 5,000 manuscripts and other items from Wallace's um, grandsons. The museum has now got about uh, 1,400 letters um, to and from Wallace, including all of the historically important um, early ones that exist. This is actually the largest uh, collection of his correspondence in the world, apart from the British Library, which has 1,600 letters. Given that the museum is such an important collection, Judith McGee um, from the library and I decided to start a project to make um, all of this, all of the letters available on the web to scholars and the, the public. Uh, we applied for funding from the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation and managed to get a three-year grant of £200,000. The project began in 2010, and the project team consists of a full-time archivist, um, Caroline Catchpole, uh, a manager, um, Judith McGee, and the director, um, that's myself. Judith spends half a day a week working on the project, and I spend um, a day a week. And we have um, lots of volunteers, about um, 100 so far, and mostly they, they work uh, from home. The aims of the Wallace Correspondence, uh, Correspondence Project are to lo locate, digitize, catalog, and transcribe all known letters uh, sent to or written by Wallace in collections worldwide, not just those in the NHM. We estimate that there are about 5,000 letters in around 100 public and private collections and in books and articles. And we, we have managed to obtain scans of about 90% of them so far. We have about 16,500 scanned images in total, each one representing a page of text. Um, it is interesting to compare our project to the famous Darwin Correspondence Project based in Cambridge, which has been running since the mid-1970s. Uh, this diagram shows Darwin and Wallace's known correspondence. Um, Darwin, in the lower left, um, corresponded with about 1,900 people, whereas uh, Wallace, in the upper right corner, um, is known to have corresponded with about 1,400 people. The names in the middle um, show people which um, both men corresponded with, so a fairly small percentage um, are shared. Um, about 15,000 letters to and from Darwin are known, so we have um, only a third of the letters to deal with. Um, our projects have different approaches, with um, Darwin um, Project's main goal being to publish uh, Darwin's correspondence as a series of thick books, and ours being to publish everything on the web. The Darwin Project has now published 20 of an estimated 30 volumes, so it's about two-thirds of the way through. They only put published letters on their website, um, so there's a wait of um, and there's a wait of only of about four years um, before they put them on the web. So, in the 38 years that the Darwin Project has been running, uh, they have actually put less than 75% of Darwin's correspondence online. Whereas, thanks to our more quick and dirty approach, we've managed to make over 67% of Wallace's correspondence available online as scans or transcripts. Um, in only two and a half years. If it were not for the um, UK's 2039 copyright law, we would actually be able to display scans of about 90% of all known letters. 
many scans have to be hidden at the moment until we get permission from the descendants of the writers of the letters, uh, which is a great shame. Although we have transcripts of about half of uh, Wallace's letters so far, most are very rough, and I estimate that to produce highly corrected transcripts, like those published by the Darwin um, Project, will take two experienced um, historians, about four years each, so about eight person years of um, effort. If I'm right, then this means that it will take our project a total of about 16 person years to locate, catalog, and produce high quality uh, transcripts of all of Wallace's 5,000 letters. The Darwin Correspondence Project, by the time it's finished, uh, will have taken more than 228 person years to do this for Darwin's 15,000 letters. That works out at about 76 person years per 5,000 letters compared with uh, my estimate of about six, only 16 years for our project. Uh, this uh, shows the user interface of the access database I designed to catalog the letters and manage the scan and transcript files. And uh, this shows the um, data structure used. Each uh, master uh, letter represents e either a manuscript document or letter Letters are treated as um, packets of documents because uh, there might be a number of items um, in a packet. So, for instance, the, the manuscript of the letter, the um, envelope that it was posted in, and any number of enclosures. Each of these items um, has a separate child record, um, and uh, each of these are linked to the master record um, so that for a letter, um, everything is sort of kept together. This is the, the home page of the um, NHM website of Wallace Letters Online. And this is the main um, search page. You can sort all the columns by clicking at the, on the, the top headers. And um, it, uh, you can do pretty sophisticated um, combination searches using different you know, names of people, dates, addresses, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if you click on one of those um, records, you go to the, the full record data, and um, the, the met metadata for the, the sort of master record is shown above, and then below is the, the detail um, about one particular item of the letter package, and you can display um, the transcript and the scan of the item separately or together, as in the case here, so the transcripts on the left and the scan was on the right. And they're, they're synced together, so uh, the page numbers in the text of the transcript, if you click those, the appropriate um, image will come up. Um, I'm extremely uh, grateful to the uh, museum's interactive media team for the splendid work that they've done in um, building this rather complex interface. Um, now all we need to do is find £750,000 to enable us to complete the project. Uh, if you'd like to find out any more about our project, please um, just go to Google and type uh, Wallace Letters, and you'll find it very easily. Thanks. Thanks very much, and I really enjoyed that visualization of that sort of cross-match of Wallace and uh, um, Darwin letters. I'd be quite intrigued to know how you did that.